Hi, my name is Analogy. I'm in Queens, New York. My question to Chad and Pharrell is, as a producer, as an aspiring producer with the new sound, how should one go about breaking in with that new sound? Should there be compromise? Should I just come in with the new sound? How should I go about doing it? I say be you, man. Sometimes you can make a decision to sort of you know, do something that sort of sound like what everybody else is doing, but that shit might not work for you, you know? I don't think that there's a lot of glory in when you win at a game playing it somebody else's way. There's not a lot of glory there. Now, there's also the sucker ass nigga to the left of you or to the right of you that fucking does fake the funk and, and wins, makes all the money. Yeah, but he's a dick face. He, he doesn't stand for anything. You got to stand for what it is that you like. Because if you do win doing it your way, look at Kanye. He did it his way. And he don't give a fuck what nobody got to say about him. You know why? Because he did it his way. And they wasn't there him struggling when he when he was struggling. They weren't there for him. But they there now. But he did it his way. Do it your way. If it fit, do what feels right for you. What do you think, Chad? I think sometimes making music is not about trying to find that new sound. It's just about expressing yourself. And it could be it could be influenced by a lot of different things. I think um you just, it's about trying to break through. I mean, naturally, what we try to do is, um, well, not what we try to do, but what anybody tries to does, do is actually not necessarily go against the grain, but just try to do something that you think people haven't heard in a while. Because a lot of the new sound isn't necessarily a new sound. A lot of it's old sound yeah. brought back. Yeah. You know, it's like, sometimes I hear some things that, like, man, I haven't heard, what's a new, what's a new jazz song? What's a new latest jazz song that's out. I haven't heard any jazz in a while. I don't know, let's do something. You know what I mean? That's how that's how the new sound naturally just comes out. So I say if you're in if you're in it in the music business for um you know I I, I say don't even try to set a goal like trying to make a new sound. Just just make music to make music. Really, you know, that, that new sound will come from you and your experiences and what you like and what you um research you know could be music your mom and dad listen to could be music that you heard overseas or something all of that draws into yourself becomes a part of you and whatever you create making that music will just naturally come out don't even try to worry about breaking through and you know trying to come up with the next invention just be you yep this is Hayes and this is an architect with some breakneck beats so. And uh, we were just wondering, what were the steps you took to get your beats in the hands of a major artist? And how did you go about breaking your sound? We started out like 12 years ago, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, you know, it's like a frog, man. As funny as that sounds, you know, you just hop from lily pad to the next. And some look like they're afloat and they can hold you when you hop on it. The shit sinks. And uh, a lot of times it's been steady, you know. And I'm saying that to say that, like, you know, it's just from situation to the, it's one situation to the next, but always make sure your last move was a great move. Because that ain't, that sets you up for your next job. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you smashing niggas, yo, you're going to get the, you're going to get the recognition. And you're like, well, how do I get the Jada Kiss? I don't know. Yo, Jada Kiss, man, I got a hot ass beat, G. Like, just give me like two seconds of your time. You don't like it, walk away. Roll a nigga with a boombox. I don't know. There's just so many different ways. And I mean, you know, like I was telling Felicia, like, you know, it seems like it's hard to get in the game, but it's not. Because the music industry numbers are lower than they've ever really been. You know what I mean? So, like, A&Rs are desperate at this point. Like, they want to make the quotas because if they don't make their quotas, they get fired. Because that's what an A&R is. An A&R is a person who finds an artist, signs them, and helps put that album together. And that's what they do. They're like scout, they're like scout people who go out there and just go get new basketball players. But if whoever they go out there to find ain't scoring no points, they get rid of the scout. The the agents. Or scouters, I don't know. That is a scout. Whatever it is, that nigga's getting fired. <laughs>
okay? Because he ain't making no numbers. Jay McGuire's. But for us, um, we just we just kept grinding, man, and we never stopped, and we never looked back. You never look over your shoulder, man. Always look forward. You know what I'm saying? And we still learn. Mm -hmm. Tons of shit for us to learn. So we looking forward to it. You know what I mean? You never. It's like you never hear nobody say, "Yeah, I'm looking backwards." Like, no, man. You gotta look forward. You gotta live, and you gotta know that you know you're gonna hear no more no's and yeses. But if you really love what you're doing. And you're really going to be determined about it, then know what you're doing and be determined about it. And if it's destined for it, for it to be, it will be. I got to tell you, out of out of 500 people that's down with this whole like, project, I'm not going to lie to you. 10 people might really, really, really get a real chance. But if you really care, you'll be one of those 10. Because you'll go the extra mile. You'll fucking go out of your way. You'll... you'll uh, You'll get the book called The Recording Industry Source, I think it's still called. And it has like every fucking um, record label and every subsidiary label and little indie labels. Like it has all those labels. And basically what that does is it tells you who got hired and who got fired every year. And it has all their numbers and all their emails. And if you really dedicate it, if there's a thousand numbers in there, you'll send a thousand CD out. That's what? Out of the thousand, ten people will actually pick it up. Out of ten people, Picking it up, five will actually listen. After five listening, two people will be impressed and maybe you might get one call. That's one avenue. There's so many different ways, man. You can't look at it from a from a the perspective of a person who is struggling who can't get in. You have to look like, yo, this box. Okay. This box has four corners. Eight. Well a square has four. But a box has eight, right? <laughs> and you gotta say to yourself, all right, I know there's eight corners to get in this motherfucker. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's six sides, right? Mm-hmm. Alright. So there's six the six sides in, right? Mm-hmm. There's six sides in and there's eight corners. I'm getting in this motherfucker. Even if you had to say to yourself, okay, well, you know, eight times six, I'm getting in there. Whatever mathematic equation you got to figure out to get yourself in there, get yourself the fuck in there. When you really give a fuck, you're going to get in there. That's the way of the world. The world is mean like that, man. It's a numbers game. And even, even beyond producing, it's a numbers game. You have to hire your probability of winning and being successful. It's not going to just fall in your lap. So I say, you know, do what you got to do. I ain't saying put on the fucking mascot suit. I'm not saying, you know, or jump around. Or, I'm not saying you got to do, you know, you don't got to put on no chicken uniform and tap dance in front of nobody. But you got to, you have to try your hand. Uh, like, if I had the opportunity to ask Neptune's a question, you know what I'm saying? I ask him, like, you know what I'm saying? We, we here in Miami, ain't no producers on really from Miami, you know, they was up in Virginia doing the same type of thing. I want to know, what can we do being from a city where we ain't known from production or producers, what can we do to like, get out there, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure they probably can know that because I know Virginia, I ain't know nothing about Virginia until they came out, you know what I'm saying? So, we in the same type of position, we got some hot shit, we got a hard ass artist, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's just hard, but you know, that, that's what something like that I, I asked them, you know what I'm saying? If the music industry is hard for you down in Miami, I would say... Move. Look at, yeah, move, or uh, not move yourself, but I mean like, I mean move your company or anything, but just like migrate to where the business is. You want to play for the Chicago Bulls, you can't exactly, you know, uh, you can't try out on the moon. You know what I'm saying? You gotta go to Chicago. And I would also say, I don't know, I know you probably like, well that sounds easier than, you know, than, than, than yeah, it's easier said than done. And you're right. But you just can't accept no. You can't accept no. You can't accept, nah, it's not gonna happen. You gotta go out there and find it. And that's in New York, that's in LA, that's approaching artists as I, as I was saying before. I don't know if you are gonna actually hear 
some of, of our other answers, but like, you know, if you got to roll up on a nigga with a boom box, do it. And if you feel like your artist is that hot, I, what I suggest, instead of chasing the majors, is do it out of the trunk. Listen, like I told this other dude, go get you an accountant that really knows what he's doing and doing in terms of numbers. Pay Uncle Sam, let's sell it out of the trunk. I don't know what the numbers are in terms of what it is you pay for manufacturing and everything, but it might be like three, two, three dollars. But at the end of the day, if you can make between five and eight dollars off of a ten dollar CD, that's what you need to be doing, brother. You really believe in your project like that, and you think that your community is going to support it? Just think, man. You know, you got a, you got like a hundred to five hundred people buying your product. Like, gee, that's a lot of paper right there. You know what I mean? To know that you put fucking, I don't know. You put like maybe twenty five hundred dollars into the situation, but walk away with like between ten and fifteen thousand dollars. What are we talking about? That's better than selling crack. Ain't nobody got a comeback ratio than that. Like that's very that's a positive thing. Can't nobody fault you. You're not doing that negative in the street. Like invest in your own your own company, and let me just tell you, when you work your say, your way up to fifty thousand to sixty thousand to a hundred thousand units, the majors will be coming after you, and hopefully you'll remember what deal Master P made when he did that eighty twenty split, which made him a super cajillionaire. Mm -hmm. You can do it, man. And you saying your artist is high and your beats are high? Absolutely, invest in yourself. Go wherever you gotta go in the neighborhood to get that investment. But turn it around <coughs> only if you believe that your shit is going to sell like that.